Hi everyone, welcome back to Criminology. I am Amy from uh, the blog I Think Therefore I Teach. Uh, in today's video I'm going to go through assessment criteria 1.4. Uh, so let's get started. I'm just going to make myself a bit smaller so that you can see my PowerPoint. Fabulous. Let's get going. All right, so... Assessment criteria 1.4. This is a really good one. This is a really interesting one. This is describe media representation of crime. So this is a descriptive one. So that again is straightforward. You don't have to justify or evaluate. This is a describe the different ways that media portray crime. So what I got my students to do first of all was have a look at different newspapers, have a look at different wordings and see basically what they think about the language that's used. So how does it make them feel? How, what effect does it have on society? So the examples here are things like calling the army, top cops plea on knife crisis, smirking at the soft uh, justice Britain, a nation's shame, 77 years for sex beasts, 47 victims of Asian sex monsters, nine guilty of grooming. So and obviously you've got the mug shots there, you've got the large lettering, we had a look at the different language that was used, the different images that were represented, etc. So we had a good discussion about how it's seen, certainly in newspapers, because obviously newspapers aren't really something that are necessarily looked at by 16-year-old students. So it's important to see how, how media does. So we had a look as well on the actual... So, excuse me, we had a look at the um, papers online. So we had a look at the newspapers and we compared the different ones, like what the Sun had, what the Daily Mirror had, what the Telegraph had. We saw, we saw if there was any similar articles and if there were similar articles, how the different articles worded that crime as well. And so this unit itself it requires you to describe media representation of crime and to give, again, detailed, relevant examples. So... The types of media that we looked at were newspapers, television, films, electronic gaming, social media and music. So these are the ones that I'm going to work through on this presentation. So what my students then did was they had a look at uh, this as their first example for newspapers. They had a look at how the um, Barcelona terrorist attack was described. So the diff we got three different uh, newspapers there, the Sun, the Daily Star and the Daily Mirror. And we looked at the language they used, the images they used. So Barcelona bastards, massacre, Barcelona bloodbath. Again, we had a look at that alliteration there, the emotive language. We had a look at the, the pictures, etc. Um, and so we worked through how this was a major incident in uh, August 2017 um, that came from Barcelona into the British news and um, dramatic headlines massacre bloodbath evil terror Barcelona bastards slaughtered on the streets it's interesting that both tabloid and broadsheet reported this in a very similar style while the terrorist attacks are atrocities and must never be condoned it was interesting how the media tend to sensationalize and exaggerate so it's very important to use this sort of language sensationalize dramatize exaggerate by using language which is emotive in order to appeal to the reader so readers newspapers want people to buy their newspapers obviously so by using this such dramatic language they want people to buy their newspaper Papers. Reporting often takes place in dramatic terms, such as use of dramatic headlines with a focus on negative aspects, scaremongering and create a moral panic. Scaremongering meaning people start getting worried and then this escalates and snowballs. So this idea that, oh, well, if they've had an attack, do we need to ride the newspapers? What's happening? Is it going to happen to us? Is something coming our way? So people start getting scared. So they read the newspapers and read the articles and have to find out more about it. Um, and does create moral panic. People are worried, certainly about things like terrorism. So newspapers themselves, one study found that one in eight news reports are about crime and that tabloids devote more space to crime. One in eight. So in every eight reports, at least one of them is about a crime. Newspapers concentrate on serious violent crimes and sexual crimes, whereas the vast majority of crimes actually recorded by the official statistics. So again, we look at the official statistics in 1.6. These are minor property crimes shoplifting things like that so often crimes are very low level um 
often unreported. The most common ones are not reported in newspapers, but yet the newspapers go for the massively sensationalised emotive cases. Um, criminals and victims in press reports both offenders and victims are typically older and have a higher status um, than those that turn up in court so often the ones that actually turn up in the court regularly um, are not those that are often reported about in the newspapers the newspapers focus upon the older and the higher status uh, people reports over represent children women middle class white and older people as victims so again this is where your race issues comes in in that we seem to focus on uh, uh black people as ha being more the offenders and so always in the newspapers or um muslims as being more offenders uh, because of the way the newspapers portray this but actually their crimes are very minimal compared to what is happening on national scale but this is the way that m media or the newspapers represent it so they often represent the victims as being white middle class women children why maybe because they're seen as uh, weaker or maybe because their readers are more white middle class maybe they're wanting to uh, relate more to the readers but it's very interesting certainly with the George Floyd situation with the with the police etc how the racism is still so clear uh, and this violence um, is still so clear and how this may have been perpetrated or escalated because of the way that media reports it the only point of agreement between news reports and official statistics is that the typical offender is male. The only thing they agree on where actually newspapers are accurate is that they are male. Newspapers um, generally tend to ignore the cause. So newspaper stories focus on particular incidences rather than the overall cause of why that crime happens. So look at the outcome, not the cause of it. And the coverage of police, again, linking to the George Floyd uh, idea and the, the, the case as well, um, the coverage of the police, police, when they're involved in crimes um, or the police, the police do things that are criminal, they're often reported as having one, there being one bad apple, you know, it's just one case, uh, you know, this doesn't happen normally, etc. So that's sidelined. Yet, if actually, if it wasn't somebody that was a police officer, again, it would be emphasised. Um, press reports tend to exaggerate the success of, um, of the police in solving crimes, while crimes committed by police officers are often presented as the work of one bad apple rather than any anything more widespread it was very interesting that one of my students said that actually the one bad apple idea is linked to a much bigger phrase um something like one bad apple spoils the spoils the bunch um and again so that bit's missed off but that bit's the true bit yeah you might have one rogue police officer but it does spoil it for everybody you know it does spoil it for all so you know you can't just dismiss it as oh it's just one bad apple no why again what is the cause of this so tv um, while newspapers report real crimes, uh, TV broadcasts both crime news and crime fiction. So it's really important that you know this. It's important that you know examples of both crime and crime, uh, sorry, crime fact and crime fiction. So TV coverage is similar to the papers in terms of strong focus on violent crimes, especially in local news bulletins, obviously. So your um, evening news, your uh, lookouts, um, you know your news your news at nine or whatever it might be used at 10 etc and um, these are often focused very much on crimes tv use lots of different formats to depict crimes so they are factual reporting crime watch the news dramas based on real crime so more side little boy blue um you have factual tv shows now uh, factual crime tv shows now i gave my students two minutes and they wrote down as many as they could think of and um, i was useless um giving them any tips because i think the only ones i could think of was uh, CIS and NCIS are they are pretty much my extent of my knowledge of uh, fictional crime shows um, but the students came up with loads loads and loads and loads and um, we've got Ag Agatha Christie in there Poirot in there we've got so many uh, that grandma watches or mum watches or dad scene so we've got loads of examples I think we've got about 20 in total so there are a lot out there uh, that you can talk about um, one in four of prime time is also devoted to crime and again we discussed why mainly because people are interested in it people like watching crime things crime programs 
And then we watch these two. We watch Crime Watch and we watch Broad Church. Um, so we had a look at how the crimes were portrayed. So the Broad Church was just kind of like the introduction to it rather than an actual episode. Crime Watch was a small snippet of, again, how they dramatise, build up, use music, use the narrator to explain the backing of the story, how they very much uh, emotionalise the victims in it. So we um, had a look at how these two on TV represent crimes. Films. Films have a huge impact on the way people view crimes. Um, and so we had a look at these two. We had a look at Wolf of Wall Street. So we had a look at the modern one with Leonardo DiCaprio. And we looked at Legend. Um, and we looked at how crimes were depicted in both of these. And so if you've ever seen either of these films or watch the, the clips or the little uh, preview clips, um, you will see certainly with things like Wolf of Wall Street, this is to do with white collar crime, this is to do with fraud, this is to do with making money illegally in illegal ways, yet it's it's glamorous and it's, you know, we've got big actors there and, you know, the way that they spend money and they have yachts and girls and, and alcohol and all of this. And so it makes these crimes look very, very interesting, very glamorous, like people want to do them. Um, legend about the, the Cray twins. This again is the idea of, you know, they were very, very violent. Um, you know, they, they, they were notorious um, uh, in London. You know, the, what they did in their behaviours, but the way the film portrays it, and again, with such a big actor, such a big name playing both parts, um, and again, very, very um, a good looking actor as well. People, people, um, want to watch it people want to link to it people want to be part of that world people want to you know if they picked an actor that was not attractive people would be less likely to not only watch it but be less likely to um you know sympathize with the characters but people sympathize with the characters they they want to be part of that world um so it's very very interesting we also had a look it's not quite a film but it's not quite tv either but we looked at things like series like peaky blinders again peaky blinders obviously the representation of a of a, an actual group group of, of men but obviously the, the dramatization made for 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 film uh well not for film for for for, for box set um but the way that they dramatize this crime this violence the use of drugs etc the idea of murder shooting all of this is is very much part of a world that you become part of you are mo you you know you sympathize with the actors etc and so it's very very cleverly done so it'd be you'd be very surprised how many things you actually watch or you engage with that are criminal as far as what you um watch on films crime is everywhere so it's very interesting to see how as a as a viewer you relate to that crime and how you feel watching that crime um, we answered those questions as well. Why do you think some crimes are depicted more positively? Does this give the film industry a lot of power? So again, they can really affect how we see certain things. Uh, and does this become dangerous? The fact of glamorizing things like violence. We then went on to electronic gaming. Uh, majority of games are 18 over 18. Again, we looked at why. We had a look at the kind of the violence that's involved in them, etc. Um Games can often trivialise crime. So we had a, uh, again, we, we asked, I asked students in my class to think of the different types of um, online, uh, not online games, but electronic gaming to see what crimes are depicted, how they might trivialise these crimes and the potential problems with gaming. So we talked about how it creates like a network of people. You don't know who you're always talking with, for example. Uh, and then we watched Grand Theft Auto 5 um, and we looked at what types of crimes were reported, etc. Uh, my class said it wasn't, a, the preview wasn't a very good representation of what the game actually is. I had to take their word for that. I've never played it. Um, but we also talked about things like uh, all the war, all the war uh, games, etc. And how um, these, ha these help you to see violence as something normal, as something enjoyable. Social media is obviously a big one and very, very much part of students' lives. Um, the reporting of crime often happens on social media. Now, you have groups that you can join, certainly on things like Facebook or Twitter, where you can be... Um, 
you can be aware of the crimes that are going on. So, for example, for me, I, I, I'm on certain groups within the area I live where I then hear about, um, you know, certain windows being broken or charity boxes being stolen or people to watch out for etc or um crimes that have been committed in areas where they want witnesses to come forward so this is something that's you know social media is unbelievably powerful for things like this because again it's a free platform that so many people can see very very quick and easy members of the public can raise awareness through postings police often have their own twitter and facebook sites They can ask for witnesses or raise awareness. Um, I think there was a little spell a, a year or so ago, maybe a couple of years now. I think we've lost a year with COVID. But yes, I think probably a couple of years ago now where... Um, uh, children were going were getting lost so people were losing their children so again they'd put it on facebook to say have you seen this child um look out for this child or um uh you know has this child is believed to have gone into this car look out for this car and things like that and so very very quickly these children were found because of the power of social media and advertising it we checked, we, we, uh, checked out Stop Hate UK, uh, the West Yorkshire Hate Crimes uh, app, uh, and we worked through these questions about how the app was used to report these crimes. So again, apps are so powerful, so clever for reporting these crimes. Finally, music. Music is the final way that we look at as far as how crimes are depicted. Many songs through the decades have been devoted to crime and criminals. As with films, they're a powerful way of affecting how the public perceives certain crimes. Um, and so some examples of are things like I Fought the Law from Clash, um, Hey Joe, Murder, a Murder of a Girlfriend by Jimi Hendrix, um, Polly Nirvana is about abduction and rape, uh, Queen Bohemian Rhapsody uh, just killed a man, uh, so it's about the idea of murder, um, Jane's Addiction um, has been, you know, caught selling, uh, stealing, theft, and again, it's a bit of an obscure one. Um, but so many songs, so many, um, you know, obviously that, that is with even going to things like rap, um, etc. And different genres of music. So much, so much music though now talks about crime, um, uh, uh, breaking the law. Obviously there was the song, um, I can't think what it's called now. Uh, the one where um, it, it got very close to the ideas of promoting rape. Um, I can I can see his name in my mind, but I can't. It's just not there. End of the day. Um, oh. No, no, it's not there. It's not there. Um, but it, uh, it was the idea of glamorising rape again. Um, so music has such a massive impact on um, how we perceive and how we see things. So certainly to do with crime. Um, so once again, all you would need to do in your exam is to describe each of these. So give examples, describe how they represent and show crime. Um, and so all you have to do is describe, use examples throughout to help you make your points nice and clear and reasoned. Um, and then that is that section of your exam done. I hope you found this useful. Um, please do comment underneath if you have anything you'd like me to go over in more detail or send me a, a question on the blog, that's not a problem. Otherwise, I will try and get 1.5 and 1.6 done very, very soon for you because I know that your exam is coming up. So I'll do my best for those, uh, but time is running out. So um, I will try my very best. Otherwise, thank you very much, everybody. Bye for now, guys.